So if you're homeless, you no record, you eventually will, right? If you like going through mental health issues, you probably are gonna get locked up, right? Whether it's overnight, still justice impacted. So I said, why can't we just stop that when it's to help them there? So you don't have to get the record and walk around with a felony like me, right? Uh, and that brought us to say, well, we can't go in as Con Connect no more. The, the, the logo has to change, everything has to change. And we changed the untapped solutions. So we said we want to just be broader for the untapped population. So still help you if you got the record. But if we can help you before, then I think the journey makes it. The journey is a little bit better for us. And, you know, those are all those different levels of motivation to bring me through the journey of, you know, how the company went and where we're at now. Stories are powerful. Powerful. Welcome to the Rise, Recover, Live podcast brought to you by The Phoenix. This is a space where people impacted by substance use can come to share their story of strength and resilience, get open and honest, and inspire hope and build community through shared experience. We'll be talking to people in our community on their own recovery journey and shine a light on the topic of recovery in all its forms. Maybe you'll hear some of your story in theirs. Let's show the world that together we rise, recover, and live. Welcome, everybody, to yet another episode of the Rise, Recover, Live podcast. We are your hosts, Bryce the Third. he, him, pronouns. Liz McKean, she, her pronouns. What up, Liz? How you feeling? I am feeling darn good. Yeah. It is a sunny day. I actually just had to close my little window next to me because the birds were singing too loud. Those are the problems in my <laughs> life right now. So. <laughs> that sounds like so. gold-plated problems. I'm telling you, I love my problems these days. So yeah, I am feeling very happy and grateful. How are you feeling, my friend? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good. Yesterday, I was talking to my partner, and I don't know. It just felt like I just I had to express that I feel good to be living my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I mean, there's been times where I've had to work, and there's been times where it's like, my life hasn't been the life that I wanted to be in. And then I wanted to go somewhere else very bad. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know. It's just right now, it's just like really easy to like, I just want to live my life and, and like water my grass and let butterflies land on my apples and and, and make music. And, <laughs> True story. <laughs> and, I saw the video. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I just want to experience life. So it's it's pretty dope. What'd you, what'd you yeah. get from the, uh, from the DoorDash last night? <laughs> Cat pizza. Pizza. <laughs> I don't do it every night, but for some reason, every time you ask me, <laughs> oh no, yeah, you're, you're not, it's, yes. it's not. It's not really working for your case that you don't do it every night because every time I ask you what I you know. got, you can tell me what you got. Yeah. Well, also we record on usually Mondays and Thursdays, and Sunday nights are I'm like one of those I get wacky on Sundays, and then Wednesdays are just usually a really stressful day. So like those are the two nights that if I'm gonna be like I just want just bring me the food, you know, like those are the nights it's gonna happen. So yeah, yeah, I know yeah. I'm just making excuses. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, so let's yeah, talk to yeah. our guests. That's, I, we gotta get off the topic of me. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. as always uh, here at the Rise Recovery Live podcast, we uh, are accompanied by a very very dope individual, Liz. Who do we yeah. have with us here today? We have this first. It's been a long time coming this conversation and um, podcast uh, friend and and once guest um, Chris Bellina introduced us to him, which um, he just always knows the coolest people. So today we have Andre Peart, who is the CEO of Untapped Solutions, which is one of the coolest platforms, technologies. I'm going to let him describe it because I will probably not I definitely won't do it justice, but I'm excited to hear about that. Excited to get to know him more and um, grateful for his patience as we talk about my pizza habit. So Andre, it is so nice to have you here. How are you doing today? I am feeling good today, and it is a pleasure to be here with you, Liz, and a pleasure to be here with you, Bryce. Yeah, most definitely. Thank you. Definitely exci ex exciting to have you here, and I'm super interested to hear about your platform, about y your story, about your relationship to servicing human beings. Uh, it it's always dope to, to hear about the motivations that lead people to serve people. Mm -hmm. um, but first and foremost, how's your energy? I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. And I and I'm always real, man. I don't come different on the podcast. I'm feeling good. I've been a little, little down lately. Really a lot of work. Only down because of being away from my kids. I got my daughters, my two year old, my eight year old. Um other than that, man, I'm not complaining. Life is good. The energy is good. Um and I'm here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Heard that, heard yeah. that. Um when when you first came into the Zoom room or Riverside room, whatever we want to call it, 
you had mentioned that you were giving some words of encouragement to your team. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and the, the smile that you just had just now, when you, when you mentioned it was the smile that you had when you came on about yeah. the words that you gave. Like, is that something that you do normally? Or are you always like pointing to the people around you? Man, when we, we do a lot of impact work for, but as a technology company, right, for us to do impact, we have to do partnerships. That partnership requires capital from the par- partners, right? They have to invest. They have to invest capital. Um, I got to encourage people to go through that process, right? To be able to reach out to these nonprofits, bring them through the process, help them understand technology. And it's not easy. Um, we come from those backgrounds. We know um, adopting new technology, nonprofits, hard. So giving, the, giving my team encouragement, just that's regular. Um, it just happens on the fly. Yeah. 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 And I think since we've like led up to it and I not at all surprised that you're the kind of leader who is pretty consistently like tapped into what your team needs and the words that they need to hear. Um, but let's start by just hearing about what it is that you do. Tell us about untapped solutions. Um, and, and what, what led to you creating this, like the change you wanted to see in the world. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, um, let me go into just tell you guys about like Untapped Solutions, what we do. One, we're formerly known as ConConnect. Um, and I just always like to make that connection because for people like Untapped Solutions, this looks like the guy who ran the company ConConnect. Um, we were ConConnect, we're now Untapped Solutions. The sole difference is we don't focus just on the formerly incarcerated anymore as we did when we were ConConnect. We now focus on the formerly incarcerated, the homeless, um, people facing substance, alcohol um, abuse, um, any of those underserved communities. That's what we do as Untapped and that's what Untapped means to us. We're a case management and workforce technology platform. So what we do, Liz and Bryce, is we deploy on the case management side. We deploy technology to nonprofits around the United States. And we're not traditional in helping you to store case notes, progress notes. All that does is remind you how much work you got to do, how many black, white, and Spanish clients you have. And that's not impact. Our system helps caseworkers, nonprofit staff members get social services, health care jobs, for their client by pulling in those resources, giving it to the caseworker and helping them start that application right now. So very fantastic sort of database that sort of uses AI and machine learning, some of those new things that people are scared to use, right? But um, very does really wonderful things to help nonprofits. Um, so that's what we do on the case management side. On the workforce side, we're used by over 400 employers that come to our platform to post jobs. So you can think of this as like an Indeed kind of platform, but really more like LinkedIn. They get to post these jobs and we use, again, AI to read those job descriptions, uh, read a person's profile, understand their criminal record if they have one, or what's just their life look like? What's the barriers? Do you got like a lot going on? Single parent, mom or dad, doesn't really matter. And we help you source to say the job that's a fit for you, whether it's a criminal background, a bank robber not seeing a job at the bank. Or is it just a busy individual having a lot of programs and need a part-time job? So that's what happens on the workforce side of our platform. It's incredible. And that's, I mean, that's, you, you compared it to LinkedIn, you know, and I, I don't, I totally can see that because there's definitely more of a human feel to LinkedIn than there is, some parts of it, than there is to Indeed. But not so much in the sense of like the whole human. I mean, there's people that post things about their whole humanness, but I mean, to consider someone's background, I mean, when I, you know, I, I, there's, there's been times that I've not wanted to fill out a form at the doctor's office because I am, you know, have a, a, all, all sorts of feelings still in some scenarios about the fact that I have an arrest record, the fact that, um, you know, I have a history of um, alcohol addiction, the fact that uh, you know, like, you know, I could, I could just go and list all my worst shames right now and that's not going to help anybody. But like to be able to be like, oh, I'm going to put these into the system because it's going to help show me the things that I don't have to have those feelings there because actually it's been filtered to make sure that my situation is not a bad thing. It's actually part of the thing that makes me uniquely qualified to be in this position. That's incredible. I mean, that doesn't exist anywhere else, does it? Oh, no, not at all, which is why we're like niche in our market. Right. Like Mm -hmm. we like to not just say we're case management. Then you start thinking all these other tools. We like to make sure you understand the difference in how we approach it. It's like a space that considers my circumstances and and that consideration can contribute to me feeling seen versus like me being exposed. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a job right as an untapped individual. Bryce, anybody coming home from prison, anybody recovering. Anybody in any underserved or untapped circumstance, when they join the platform, it looks really like LinkedIn. It looks like a social network, but it's their peers recovering, 
their pairs on job interviews. So you got encouragement, right? You're not seeing just girls, guys doing crazy stuff. The things we see on Facebook and Instagram, right? You see different things. We don't know. Mm-hmm. Our algorithm shows different kinds of posts, different things. It gets to apply to jobs, apply to services. We got all your social. We got everything. So when you do an application, like Liz said, you don't got to refill. We, we already know the deal. You don't have to like put that information in again. We already got it mm-hmm. in the system. It's there. Let's just streamline how fast you can get it now. Right. Like that's what that's what it's all about. Yeah. Right. And it's more than just the getting a person a job. Like you, I, I was looking at your mission statement and it was one of the reasons I was you know super excited to talk to you and, and just work with you as much as we can, because, you know, you're talking about building. Let me, I'm going to read part of it, actually, because I love it, that we strive to cultivate self-sufficiency, resilience and foster a more inclusive, equitable society. Like that's big yep. freaking dream, man. Like, is it working? I mean, I guess I know the answer, but <laughs> is it working? Yes, it is working. It's doing good. And um, we've only been, we, I mean, in, as Untapped Solutions, less than a year, right? Um, but we've yeah. been around for a total of three years. What's the impact, Ben, that you've seen? So, so far, 70,000 people connected to jobs and services within our platform. And that's just been incredible for us on the, I mean, on the caseworker side, we're past 10,000 hours saved, right? Um, and I think you just know, and being in a nonprofit background, what that means for a staff member, right? Reduce fatigue, not taking work home with you, not taking your clients stress home every day. And overall, you don't think about quitting your job, right? The turnover in nonprofits is ridiculous. People, I quit my job at a nonprofit because, not because the caseload, I couldn't serve them efficient enough. The people where I was working at, the, the nonprofit I was working at, I couldn't serve them because of the operation, the technology. And that led me to just feel like, I can't work here. I'm not serving the people fast enough. I'm telling people, no, I'm telling them, wait, the referral didn't go through. Um, you know, so for us to see that impact, um, it's, it's been it's been incredible. It's been great. A lot of we get feedback, which is great. It's hard to, to for people to tell you, hey, can you make this better? And we've been able to build a community within Untapped that tells us that make this better, do this right, and we do that for our customers. So you know, it's been a it's been a good journey. So as a as a business solution, I'm I'm sure that there is uh, some type of uh, uh, investment. But for like somebody like me just getting out of prison or I'm just getting out of rehab or I'm just entering entering into the workforce off of the street, what is the requirement for me to be able to access this tool? Not a dollar. We it's in our clause. It's in our mission statement. The longer version um, mission statement is: we don't ever charge formerly incarcerated individuals. Anybody who's part of the Untapped community, you don't get charged. There's no from automatic resume building to the automation to the AI, um, it's all free for you. So mm-hmm. no charge, you join the community and you put as much information as you want, right? It's like when you're ready, right? Like I wasn't ready to tell people about like my, my you know, my abuse of alcohol or anything like that recently came out. Um, so it's like when you're ready to tell us more in the system, the data is yours. We don't see it, sell it, share it. I like to always point that out. None of that kind of stuff. Um, all it's used for is for better matching, better personalization, right? Those, mm-hmm. Again, leaving personalization to a caseworker, they're great people, but it's hard to personalize even 15 case, a 15 person caseload to give every single person a unique experience. Right. Um, it's hard. So if we we ha- we're happy we get to give people a unique experience based on like who you are, and what you're ready to pull in. And as you put more information, your experience becomes different on untapped solutions. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's dope. That's dope. I think um, with some of. The greatest inventions, uh, there are uh, motivations that were driven behind personal experience. Um, it, it, does any of your personal experience play a role into why you decided that this was a, a gap that needed to be fulfilled? Yeah, yeah, 110%, man. Um, so, I mean, when we started as ConConnect, um, I want to say, I always like to just be real and tell people, I think when we started at ConConnect, my main thing that brought me to do it was just doing being doing prison time, right? Like the five and a half years in state prison, getting out, the homeless shelter thing was terrible, but my mind wasn't on any of the other things. Like I didn't have food stamps money. I was like, damn, that incarceration screwed me. Like the job journey, the reentry, I went to the reentry orgs and I was like sitting in like the weight room and I was like, I walked out. I was like, I can't do this, man. Like, mm. got to figure this out. On, I said, I got to figure this out on my own because um, it's feeling like 1950 and I'm just 28 years old. Mm-hmm. Right? So like, you know, I got a different kind of mindset than maybe somebody who would like have sat there um, and all those different things. So like going through that, we built ConConnect and that was solely built off. Like I had a bad experience in getting jobs and getting services. So ConConnect was a platform you signed on 
it looked like LinkedIn, you can see jobs and services and start intake same day instead of going to sit somewhere, right? That was the initial vision. And the initial motivation was really behind like just my experience at that time. I then started, you know, any like any small business owner, unless your business blows up overnight, I still got to work a full time job. That full time job for me at that point was becoming a caseworker at a nonprofit. I felt like as I'm doing this, you know, building my tech, I got to give back still. and I want to give back as a caseworker. That experience was another experience, right? Another another motivation because I got to see firsthand how large nonprofits that I worked at, small ones, how we dealt with clients, how we, you know, the treatment was good, but how we dealt with them, the operation around their service delivery, the operation around total outcomes. Um, I wasn't inspired by it, man. And that that lack of inspiration that I got from working in those backgrounds allowed me to get motivation to start saying, dang, Con Connect shouldn't just be a job board. We got to build a new case management system. Nonprofits need help, right? Like they need help. So let's start doing this. But that's taking millions of dollars to try to build this kind of like system, right? We're exploring all these different things. Um, but we were able to do that, right? We, that motivation, we raised millions of dollars to be able to build it. And like leading up to like the final motivation, and of course, motivation is continuous in this journey. But like the final, one of the biggest final motivations was when I got to look back at what else did I go through? Like, you know, a, two years after prison, what else did I go that said, dang, homelessness screwed me. I was in that shelter for 16 months. It was worse than prison, the intake shelter. I was like shoot, shooting needles. I was like, dang, this is real deal stuff. I only seen this on TV. So like going through that experience and then sitting there like, dang, I didn't really do no reentry services. I didn't really check the mental health aspect out. I didn't do much, but um, I just had a lot of ambition and kept, gr- and kept grinding. I said, all these other populations, you know, that are going through these things that aren't justice impacted. Let me do some research. And what I found was that they all lead to becoming justice impacted at high rates. So if you're homeless, no record, you eventually will. Right. If you like going through mental health issues, you probably are going to get locked up. Right. Whether it's overnight, you're still justice impacted. So I said, why can't we just stop that when it's to help them there? So you don't have to get the record and walk around with a felony like me. Right. Um, and that brought us to say, well, we can't go in as Con Connect no more. The, the, the logo has to change. Everything has to change. And we changed to untapped solutions. Because we said we want to just be broader for the untapped population. So still help you if you got the record. But if we can help you before, then I think the journey makes it. The journey is a little bit better for us. And, you know, those are all those different levels of motivation to bring me through the journey of, you know, how the company went and where we're at now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, that's 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 a phenomenal evolution of showing up to serve. Have you always been like solution oriented in, in this way? Like you, like the way you, I, this is our first time meeting. So the way like you click, it strikes me as like, you've always been intuitive or, or, or sought to like seek solutions and put things together. But has that always been the case? It, it, it has just in bad ways, right? Mm-hmm. Um, right. I've been home four years, right? I've been doing this business. Like I've had the, the fortune you know, unique story of coming home after a year and a half, raising millions of dollars from Google, big investors, and living a different journey for, that was an average and, you know, formerly incarcerated individual. A lot of people meet me and they're like, you must have been doing some kind of college stuff, master's degree things, or you don't have a bad offense. I'm like, I'm, I was locked up for attempt murder. Mm. I said, I sold drugs my whole life. I've been in the streets. I, I don't got a college education. I said, this is just ambition. To go back to your question, I've always had it. I just used it wrong, right? Like I was always mm-hmm. solutions, right? Like drug solutions. How do we, why are we standing on the corner? Everybody gets locked up standing on the corner. We didn't run that establishment. We found it a different solution, right? Like yeah. every, all those kind of things. I just don't want to do that anymore, right? Yeah. Like so same mindset, transferable skills, run a company, yeah. right? Like, so doing that. Did you, did you have somebody that believed in you and helped you see that you could use this, this innate, uh, desire to show up and improve uh, in a way that can improve the lives of others and make positive impact? Or was that just something that like you just took a bet on yourself? I took a big, definitely took a big bet on myself because in the world, right, that I lived in coming home from prison, and I was quite alone, right? Uh, you know, just a regular story, right? Now, and like, and I'll say, even if it's sad, it's like not something I was stressed about. So coming home alone, I mean, my dad, Regular, regular story. We all heard just no father around. Unfortunately, my mom passed, um, you know, right prior to going to prison. So I sort of came home and was just like, all right, out there by myself, right, for a little bit. But I had good people, like a guy named Peter Harper, who, I, who became a mentor from like some type of entrepreneur program. Just came, sat, had wherever he came from his office in Manhattan, was the VP of a big company, came, sat time and spent time with me making a business plan, all this stuff, helping me get my personal home home to a college education right on business so like i had an individual like him 
And then, you know, as much time as he gave me, you know, I then met another individual that he met, introduced me to to help me understand tech, tech a little bit. So like learning from just those two individuals up until I started building the company and met a guy named Michael Cohn, who I don't say he's the big, big believer. I felt like those two individuals believed in me. I super believed in myself. My aunt, who's my mom, identical twin, right? That's, that's my mom. You're identical. She mm-hmm. believed in me, right? But she don't understand what the hell I do, technology and all that side of stuff. But she believes in whatever I call her and say, this is what I'm doing. She believes in me, right? <laughs> a guy named Michael Cohn, who I met in Atlanta, when Techstars, they became my first investor um, in the company. But this guy became the lead investor and mm-hmm. gave me a quarter million dollars in 2022, only two years after prison, no college education. He just had a conversation with me, runs a venture capital fund. And we went to dinner and I was funded with $250 million. 250, not million. I wish I'm going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even catch that at first. <laughs> $1,000 to um, start my ramp up, man. And that, you know, just bring me to where I'm at. Yeah. It's right. incredible. You know, it's, it's just like, just, I'm thinking about, um, this book that I've been reading that I feel like it's a whole different conversation, but it's about how like laziness is like not actually a thing. Like when you see somebody that you consider, you know, lazy is just the, the, the word, but I feel like we have a million words. It's, um, it's, it's just somebody, it's a symptom of something, you know, like, and it's like when we walk past somebody that's, um, that's homeless and it's, Mm-hmm. the thing that people will say was you get a job and like I have friends who are homeless and like you know how hard we as a society work to make sure they don't get a job yeah. <laughs> like really really hard yeah. so like you are getting things out of the way and for you Nick Wells um, is another person who's been on this podcast and you know he was in prison for 14 plus years and he talked about the same thing he's like oh, I've always been incredibly hard working incredibly action you know based and solution driven he's just like when I was up to no good I was great at it you know <laughs> he's like and now and then I found that I could like change my situation in a way. And I wanted to share that with everybody else. So I feel like that's just such a shared thing in so many people and justice impacted substance impacted. Like we, we all just share this space of like, I have so much and it's just pointed in a direction that in the moment is the best solution I have. But it's like a potential that like, is like a secret superpower. You know, we go in our little phone booth and take off the business suit and all of a sudden we're freaking superheroes. Anyways, Save me, Bryce, because I'm going into metaphor land. It's going to get bad. <laughs> you, know, you know you're deep in metaphor land where you get to smack in the mic. Like, are you really feeling it? <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, man. I, this, this, is, this is a phenomenal um, example of taking charge of our lives and serving others with what it is that we find as we develop ourselves. Yep. And uh, I'm interested in a couple of things. One of them being like, how do you how do you maintain your well being these days, as well as mm-hmm. continue to cultivate wisdom that allows for you to contribute to the communities that you hope to impact? Yeah. So first and foremost, um, the first thing I do, man, is before I did the while I did the case management thing, one thing I developed in prison was um, that fitness, right? That most of us do, you know. In the yard, the gym. I was a gym junkie. I worked in the gym. My life was a gym in prison. I came home and I turned it into my life, but I became a personal trainer. Um, after I quit my job because Untaps, you know, Con Connect was getting investment. They said you got to relocate. Um, I took a chance. I quit my job, but I always opened up a personal training um, studio. And that's been great. So fitness has always been like one thing I could do to keep the well being. I always neglected um, the mental health to talking to the therapist because I was a black man thinking like, can't go talk to these therapists. And, I, you know, in a, some way, I still feel that way. I talked to a better therapist. I found one. But talking to a, a therapist that understands just what I went through, I really come from the streets. Mm-hmm. Like, unless you really come from what I come from and done some of the shit that I've done, to, you know, it's a, me talking to you is you're going to have to just, I guess, use research in, in, some of the, in a lot of those cases. But you, there's not a lot of relation. Right. But it's still been good conversation. So I definitely now for the past four months has been practice in therapy. I always have practiced fitness for well-being too. And then the third thing is just, a, a, I have a great, you know, I got a great system. My kids' mothers are great to me. My partner, Gloria, preaches gospel, you know, gives me that faith. Um, so I got a lot of good people around me, man, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I think what, what I was talking about in the beginning of the podcast, uh, where like, I'm like, I just want to live my life and like, I'm happy to live my life. Like if I, if when I stop and look around, like, 
building our well-being into our success is important. And a big part of that is the people we keep around us. So, you know, you talk yeah. about you talk about your your mom's twin sister and, and your kids' moms and, and your mentors, like being surrounded by people that that pour into you, but also see you for who it is that you can be and help to create the environment in which that person can thrive. There's, there, there's, that's, that's the seed. That's the fertilizer for a, a well, a well lived life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Andre, you'd said that you're, I, I hope I'm not spoiling a surprise and we can cut this out if I am, but that there's a podcast po- possibly in the, in the works for, for yeah. you and your team with some stories yeah. to share. Yeah. Um, what kind of stories are you excited to share? Yeah. So we're going to focus on two things. One, we want to be able to tell the stories that caseworkers, you know, often tell with just within internal organizations. Um, and then a lot of orgs know, but those stories become really difficult, really hard. They bring them home. Clients that, you know, we don't, I think we on LinkedIn and everywhere, we just talk about the good outcomes. And I think because we do that, we hide away from the, the truth, which are the bigger yeah. number, the, the outcomes that aren't as good after our programs get done. We want to tell those. We want to tell good stories, but we also don't want to hide away from the from the story. So we want to bring on, you know, not the VP of your org who hasn't seen a client in 10 years. We want to bring on your caseworker, your social worker, we want to bring it in our podcast. We want to understand what they're going through. We want to, without saying clients names, talk about some things that they're willing to share. Right. And then we want to bring employers on too as well. Cause right. That's what, that's one of the biggest things we do here on Untap Solutions. We understand why employers hire individuals or why they don't. Right. So you're going to see both. You're going to see employers that haven't done it. And you know, we're going to be able to ask that why. And we're going to talk to employers that have done it too as well. And that way they can share those one we want them to share two things. Why should other employers do it, but also help nonprofits. How do nonprofits mm-hmm. get with you? Cause they get with you because they have your next, um, your next, they got the job seekers, but they're not business people. And we know you guys are in a different role. You're corporate, they're nonprofits, a communication style. We want to make sure. So that's what we're going to be talking about on Untapped Solutions, the podcast. That's super cool. Yeah. And that, I mean, when you allow the story to be the story and not the happy ending, you know, that is so often what you, all you see, then the folks that are still in the, in like, in the awful part or like just haven't had that happy ending, like they are able to not feel like, oh, well, there's just something wrong with me and this isn't even like available to me. You know, it's, it's, I was thinking about that when we first started the podcast and we were like, oh my God, I'm so, we got butterflies on apples. We got birds singing, things like that. Like, I'm just thinking of me listening to like recovery podcasts back in the day. And there probably would be days that I'd be like, okay, hang in there. I want that. And there'd also be days that I'd be like, go straight to hell. Like do not pass go, (laughs) you know? Um, But it's like, you need all of it. You need the, the, the hope, which is the, this is possible. Cause it's, if I did it, you could do it. And yeah. then also the crap. So it's like when you're in the, when you're in that moment, you continue to know that you're not the only one. It's not, it's not, this isn't forever. This moment isn't forever. So I love that. Thank you for, thanks for bringing all the stories. Yeah. I'm excited to hear it. Yeah. Th- and thanks for reminding me, Leah, of how there's times that exist where butterflies don't land on my apples and life isn't Disneyland. Thanks. I hope butterflies only ever always land on your I wonder if they like because. poop on your apple when they land on it. That'd be fucked up. That'd be messed up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And I took a bite like immediately right where the butterfly was. Oh my goodness. Um, well, I knew you survived. So apparently if that is the case, it's, it's not toxic. <laughs> <laughs> Exposure therapy, baby. There you uh, go, butterfly poop. Andre, uh, it has been an absolute honor to have you on the show. Um, we're excited to keep up with Untap Solutions and everything that you do moving forward. And you got a podcast that I don't know how long it's going to be before it's developed and put out there, but you've already got one subscriber. That's crazy. I've never heard of a podcast that it doesn't exist with one subscriber already because that's me. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> and, and we'll make sure we that we keep, uh, we'll put all that information in the description of this podcast so people can find you and tap in with you. What's next for Untap Solutions? And then what's next for Andre? Um, what's next for us, man, at Untapped Solutions is one, we're just continuing to build out more powerful stuff when it comes to case management, right? We really we understand there's big people out there, there's Salesforce, there's these big players that have been out there, you know, billion dollar companies. And we just want to continue to be show the difference, right? Like so fully focus um, on better case management because honestly, better case management brings better outcomes for all um, Untapped, formerly incarcerated, homeless, anybody that needs a case manager, right? Um, versus just focused on like one pillar. So that's what's next for us. 
Um, wouldn't also, I think you guys might really like this too, is we're doing a big, big step on substance abuse and alcoholism, right? Um, in the platform. Individuals like that interact with our platform differently. And it just makes me think of like my days, like when my mom passed, um, I immediately became an alcoholic, uh, immediately. Um, mm-hmm. I just didn't know how to react at 20 years old um, mm-hmm. to it. And shortly off about, and when I caught this crime, I was drunk. So, you know, mm-hmm. that drunk when I did this on camera, on News 12, on a station with a cup of liquor in my hand and a gun in the other. Mm-hmm. Stupid mm-hmm. stuff, right? Um, so I, as I think, it's again, as you guys hear in the story, like I, I get time now as we grow to think back about like, oh man, what about substance? Like, are they getting on their phones and having issues? Cause like, you know, you're on drugs, right? How do we get the app to help you in that case? So like, those are two, those are better case management. And then on the user side, the job seeker, how do we help those individuals um, too as well, right? Go through, mm-hmm. um, just go through an app differently. Cause it, you know, if they experience a different than somebody not on drugs or somebody not on alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta say, man, um, and this is just like, coming from the, the bottom of, of my heart. Like, just the way that you approach this, like, I really appreciate, I'm, I'm glad that somebody like you is at the forefront of, of pushing pushing this forward, you know? Like, the consideration that comes from personal experience and, like, like considering how somebody, like, yeah, I'm, I'm high right now. Like, of course I wouldn't, like, pick up a, my phone or, like, pick up an app. Like, there's, there's a, a subset of people who deal with substance use disorder that would not even have a phone. Like, so how do we access those people? How do we make this accessible, you know, versus, like, oh, well, this is how we're going to do it. And, you know, the, if they're going to get here, they're going to get here. Uh, yeah. that, that consideration, I think that, I think, one, that they're, there is the the role of like having uh, had a personal experience that plays a role into being able to show up and consider that way. But there's also like a level of empathy and compassion too that is being exercised. And I've heard it throughout you sharing this whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I appreciate that. Definitely. Yeah. So somebody is wanting to get started. They can, we're going to share your website and is that the best, best course of action for them to course of action do? And, and easiest. Cool. You get right on in the site. Untapsolutions.io. Okay. Io. Cool. Yep. And that is in the, and you know, even if you're not, even if you don't think that this is something that you're, you know, ready for right now, or maybe you're not sure whether it applies to you or your company or your person, like go, like check it out. Cause it's really exciting and it's firing. And like, I just, I am just really pumped to have you on here and to be sharing this. And yeah, I think we did it. Yeah. But yeah. Real, real, real quick, real quick though, yeah. cause I, I asked what was next for untap, but like what's next for Andre? Uh, yeah. you, 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 uh, how are you going to take care of you yourself? You what's, away with that. <laughs> yeah, what's the evolution <laughs> yeah. look like of the person? Yeah. Me, man. Um, I am actually spending this big year because to be honest with you, I'll share this with you. This is something that, you know, me and my family spoke about. I ain't do reentry services. Mm-hmm. I went full throttle. Um, you know, full throttle, did no reentry. I just started mental health four months ago. I just literally, to be honest, started like, you know, taking my taking more like taking an outlook on like what's fucked up about me actually right now, what I'm doing mm-hmm. wrong um, and seeking. Right. I think I'm not going to go to a reentry org, but I can now I'm in a position to seek professional services and get things and get and get the help I need. Um, I want to be a better father. Right. I got kids. I'm always working, running to the kids, working, running to the kids. I've got to figure out which one is more important at some times. Though the kids are top priority. Like I got to run this business. It's It's new. Like all those different things. So this year, I'm focused on me, man, to be honest with you. I'm fo- I want to be a better father. I want to be a better boyfriend. Become a better To learn that boyfriend stuff to help me be a better husband to my partner, who's been great to me, too, as well. So, I mean, I'm, I'm about growth right now. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Well, I'm excited to keep up with your journey. Uh, we're excited to continue to tap in with you. And mm-hmm. it's, it's been an absolute honor that you you came to Rise, Recover, Live. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. The honor is here. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, and we're honored that you all uh, made it to the end of the episode. I, we, I, I know this one is impactful for somebody. It was impactful for me yeah. for sure. Me um, let us know what you think in the Rise Recovery Live podcast space on the app. Come drop some of the nuggets that you pulled out of this episode in there. Come talk to us and find all the resources at in the show notes. And we will catch you next time on the next episode of the Rise Recovery Live podcast. So now you're excited. Bryce, Liz, how do I get involved with the Phoenix? Well, my friend, it is super simple. We actually have an app. Head over to the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store or look in the show notes of this podcast, wherever you're listening to or watching this podcast and go download the Phoenix app. 
The Phoenix app makes it so easy to find classes that are near you or to access our virtual class schedule where you can hop on from the comfort of your home. You can also join our groups and have a conversation with someone from the Phoenix community from anywhere in the world. Please make sure that you join the podcast group where you can connect with Bryce and I and other listeners. Everything that you need is in the show notes. You can also head to our website at www.thephoenix.org. And maybe while you're there, you click the volunteer tab and get even more involved.